Good morning, guys. Um, I know I probably said 15 times that I was done with my kayak, but uh, there was a few things that I didn't really like that I'm fixing before I have uh, my first tournament because I was hurt. I should have done been started. I think I've missed four so far, something like that. But anyway, got a few things I want to get done and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now, I am not by any way, shape or form, telling y'all what to do on your boat. Um, if you're not careful, you can mess these things up. Um, especially something like I'm doing, when you mess with scupper holes or anything like that, you can damage your boat. So, you know, I'm not telling you to do what I do, I'm just showing you what I did and what works for me. Hang on, I'll turn you around. Okay, what I did is this is a two inch. Oh, there it goes. I knew it was gonna happen. Anyway, this, this is a two inch nipple. I drilled a hole in it. This is my transducer. That cord will go up through this nipple. It's hollow. That hole I drilled will bolt right there on my transducer. Now, on a Pelican Catch 110, this is your scupper hole. It's, it's a very small hole. And what I did was I threaded the hole. You can screw that nipple into that hole. I have a nut actually that screws on the other side, but you screw it in like that. And your transducer, once I run that wire up through the center, your transducer backwards will mount flush against the bottom of your boat. And this is a tunnel hole. I don't know if you can see that, but this keeps it up flat against the boat out of the way where it won't hit anything. And uh, I'll show you as I go along what I do. But like I said, if you are gonna mess with these scupper holes, you gotta be real, real careful. Cause I don't know what kind of boat you got or how thick they are, but this is pressed together, welded together. So me threading that little spot right there didn't hurt anything. But like I said, I don't know how your boat is. So yeah, be careful if you start doing this stuff. Let me get a few more things set up and I'll show you how I put it in there. Okay. All right, I got the, uh, the nipple drilled out. You run your cord through the center and on these Garmin fish finders, the cord is about 20 feet long. I don't know if it's actually 20, but it's long. Pull it all the way through. That's your bolt and your lock nut. Be real careful when you do this for your cable. You don't want to damage your cable. So hold it to one side of the bolt where it won't. I put some tape around mine as well just to kind of be on the safe side, you know. Lift this tight. Where it would kind of thread itself through that last hole. It's a little bit of insurance. And then Keep an eye on your cable, make sure you ain't got it in a in a bad position. Finish screwing it through. Just like that. Lock nut on the other side. And then I'll show you when I put it in the scupper hole on the boat. But that's what you, what you're looking at. Okay. Then once you get your transducer bolted on, just take your cable, 
push it through the hole, all 25 feet of it. Start turning, make sure your cable don't get in a twist. But you just screw it down as far as you need to. I like mine pretty flush. That way there's less chance of damaging it. That's gonna be about it right there. Alright. Now as you can see, that's a nice flush fit and it's down in the tunnel so when i out on the lake and stuff i go over a little snag or something like that it might bump it but i don't think it'll hurt it so let me flip the boat over i gotta go to the other side now we flip this back over easy You'll have something looks like that. All right, hang on. Then, holy cow, let me, uh, I gotta get the end of the cable again. Put the nut on. Sorry about the shaking around, guys. I'm early and I'm trying to, uh, yeah, anyway. All right, now. Cable in, make sure your threads are turned in towards where you're going with it. Pull out all 125 feet of cable back through there. And then get your nut in there. And I'm not gonna make you watch me struggle to get that on. But anyway, that'll be the finished thing and I'll show you when I'm finished. All right, you may be asking yourself why I'm going through all this trouble when I could just do like everybody else and put a piece of PVC pipe over the side and have a water cable in my way up there and all that. But that's exactly why I tried it that way. And what happens is when I'm pedaling, um, you get a wobble. And I didn't want to screw nothing to the side of my boat to stop that. So I had it like this before, but not this well installed. But let me get you flipped around and I'll show you. All right, you can see I get the cable out of that gum way. There we go. Um, you can see the cable in there. I'm gonna take these pliers. I'm gonna snug that nut down real snug like that. All right, nice and clean. But the reason I wanted to do it like this is when you got a pedal drive kayak, when you stand up or shift to the front, you get some water in here. When that water runs back here behind your seat, I want it to still be able to drain out that. All of the water that'll stay in there is the height of that nut. The rest of it will drain out the scupper. That's why I went through all the trouble. But now I can fold up all 116 feet of this cable and put it in the pouch on my back of my seat and it's not in my way. And my fish finder goes over there by that old big fat dog right there. Doji bug, say hey. Hello. All right. He said, hello, hello, peoples. Hello, peoples of YouTube. Okay, but anyway, my fish finder mounts, I can mount it on that side or that side in the gear track. And when I get all that uh, fixed and done, cause I gotta make a mount for the gear track, I'll show you how to do that. Maybe that way it'll give y'all some ideas of, you know, how to do it. If you don't wanna spend a bunch of money. Yeah, I could have spent a hundred dollars and got a transducer mount that hangs over the side and still wobbles. My buddy's got one, he said it wobbles. I don't want it to wobble. I want it to be fixed just like that, stable, where it don't have any interference in the readings. And then I could, you know, those mounts that go in the gear track, I think the cheapest one I've seen was like 25 or $28, $30, whatever, I don't know. But when I can build something myself, I don't like to spend the money. Um, God give you hands and a brain. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna do that, and then I'll come back and get y'all involved in that. Um, but I believe y'all will like that that transducer thing if you try it. It's real clean, 
and like I said on my boat it's up in that tunnel and won't hit anything so if you you know if you got this boat I know it'll work I know some of the others are kind of tunnel hold boats but yeah anyway there it is and I'll show you everything when it's completed or I'll show you that while I'm working on it but I'll show you how it looks when I get everything hooked up and put on thanks guys okay this is the Garmin Striker Plus 4 mounting bracket and you can't just bolt this down to something with big bolts or something there are screw holes in there and the screws have to be recessed because it's quick release but you slide this in and it locks so you can't have anything and it turns so you can't have anything in there that'll block this quick release mechanism um, so now I gotta make something where I can screw this plate down and slide this in without anything in here interfering with this. So I'm gonna uh, scratch my brain a minute and I'll get back with you. Okay guys, I was gonna show you this too. Um, my last video I posted, I was doing a camera mount for the back. Holy crap, uh, it's just rain coming off the trees. I was gonna say it's bluebird skies. Anyway, um, I used a piece of a dollar store cutting board and i don't remember what i did with it now but it, it's crap um it cracked so i still didn't like the wobbliness if that's a word of the camera because like i said at that point that's one of the points in the form where the material's probably the thinner you know side of things um it's not weak it's just it's not meant to support stuff that tall, I don't think. Anyway, let me show you. This is what I come up with. This is completely coated, I don't know if you can see it, with 100% waterproof HVAC silicone. It's, and I did around the bottom, sealed it, and the sides right here, I, I sanded them off, cracked it a little bit there, putting a screw in, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, everything's coated, screw holes and all with silicone. So that's what I did to shore that up. And now it don't, it don't have no wiggle. It don't have no wiggle. That's a uh, three quarter marine grade plywood. So it should last a while. And I'm rethinking my cart, cart, Lord have mercy, Jay. I'm rethinking my crate for the back. Um, my wife brought me a crate that they were getting rid of at work and they gave them to her boss and he passed a couple on to us and i'm looking at making that my crate but i gotta figure out exactly how to do it but yeah um let me show you what i came up with for the fish finder mount it's uh simple but effective all right same three-quarter plywood it's got two t-bolts i use toilet bolts um they sell kayak bolts for 10 times the price if you want to buy those but toilet bolts do the same thing there it is i hadn't sealed it in silicone yet but you just slide one in slide. oh i went too far dang it slide it back come on slide the other one in and you slide it where you want it. Tighten your nuts down and Bob's your uncle. That's for you, Carl. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's what I come up with. I'm gonna coat it in silicone and once I get it on and get the fish finder on it, I'll bring you back and show you the finished product. Okay, guys, there's the mount on the track. I got the wires ran down all neat under my seat. They come up here this is an old butt bag i've had this thing for years it's camouflaged unzip it i got two nine amp hour batteries in there so i won't be running out of fish finder or light or anything uh but yeah i'll show you when i get the fish finder on there but that's how it's gonna be it's nice and clean i like that side table i would probably use it if i was catfishing um or something like that but for bass fishing tournaments i want it nice and clean light 
So I'll show you. I gotta figure out where to put that monstrosity and it'll blind you. You gotta wear friggin' sunglasses. It's like looking straight into the sun. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll show you when I get done. All right. Well, as you can see, I'm sitting in the kayak. There's my view of the fish finder. Let me turn it on. She's on. Get a simulator. Turn it on. Uh oh. There we go. Well, there's the little mount I made. I'm gonna take the Dremel and grind them bolts off a little more. But that's that, and the cables run down under my seat to the back. Ah. Oh! <laughs> then they go up in the pouch, and that's where the batteries are. Put my crate back in. But that's a lot slimmer and better than that table I had on there. <clears throat> but yeah, it's really simple to make um, and put on. Anybody can do it. Uh, you don't need fancy tools and stuff, but there it is. And I uh, appreciate y'all watching. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless.